hands were placed and on the hills of glory, happy reunions on the streets of gold. Angels were singing glad praises forever, but Jesus will outshine them all. Oh, what glory awaits me in heaven's bright city. When I get there, the sights I'll behold. A million scenes of our beauty will demand that I view them. Still, Jesus will outshine them all. Mansions will glisten on the hills of glory. Happy reunions on the streets of gold. Angels were singing glad praises forever. But Jesus will outshine them all. The sparkling river is flowing. Happy faces of glory. Land of splendor where light never falls. The golden glass gives reflection to the city's perfection. Still Jesus will outshine them all. Mansions will glisten on the hills of glory. Happy reunions on the streets of gold. Angels were singing glad praises forever. But Jesus will outshine them all. Yes, Jesus will outshine them all. It's by with just God is being loved. A little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I've got a mansion that is silver lined. I've got a mansion. Just up the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander. But walk on streets that are pure as gold. Don't take me poor, deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound, I'm just a pilgrim in search of a sea. I want a mansion, a harbor and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, We'll never more wander, but walk on the streets that are pure as gold. If you would turn in your Bibles this morning to Psalms 100. Let's all stand and we read the Word of God. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endeareth to all generations. Fathers, we come to you this morning. Lord, as we enter this Thanksgiving season, Lord, we're just so thankful, Lord, for all the blessings of life, God. Lord, I pray that each and every one that's here this morning, Lord, each and every one that's listening on Facebook or YouTube, Lord, could take this message, Lord, and apply it to their hearts. Father, we give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You know, every time that door opens right there, whoever enters should be thankful for all God has done in their life. This is my version of a thanksgiving message. This is what God laid on my heart for Thanksgiving. I pray, Lord, to give me a Thanksgiving message. If we could enter into the spirit of this song, every day would be a Thanksgiving day. The psalmist invites all the earth to enter into the courts of God's house with joyful songs. In many of the psalms, the minor chords overpower the major ones, and weeping prevails over rejoicing. But this psalm is full of unclouded sunlight. The reason for this gladness is suggested in the words, we are his. His by creation, by providence, and by grace. And he also, by the glad uh, consecration of our hearts to his service. We belong to him by right, and it is for us to see to it that we are also his by choice. And his ownership involves his shepherd care. We are his flock. It is for him to lead us into green pastures and still water. You know, I got to thinking last night as I was reading over this. And, you know, Thanksgiving should be every day. We, we ought to be thankful to God and thank Him daily over what He's done for us. I know we can't list everything in the world that he's done for us because if we did, we'd still be here a couple weeks from now thanking him. But that's what Thanksgiving every day is all about. Give thanks to God for what he's done. He's done so much in my life. He's, he's brought me down when I got out of line and put me in a point that I had to reach up to him. And I'm thankful for that because if, if, he, if, if, if Jesus wasn't watching after us, When we go astray, we'd stay astray. There's no telling where we'd end up at. But I thank God that when we do go astray, He pulls on our heart. And He don't let up until we Acknowledge him and try to 
come back to his grace and his mercy. Because if it wasn't for his grace and mercy, what's he used to live? Amen? I hope everybody in here looks to me as a friend. But as a friend, I'm going to let you down at some point. Not intentionally. I pray it's not intentional. But at some point, Anyone you call a friend on this earth is going to let you down. But when you look to Jesus as your friend, he is the only true friend anyone can have. He will never, ever let you down. He'll be beside you through sickness, through health, through pain, through death. He will be right there beside you. You know, as a preacher, I feel obligated when somebody dies that's kin to somebody in the church, I need to be there. I don't care who it is. Now there may be come there may may come a time that I can't be there. Because I may be sick. I'm not in good health. But yet, as a pastor, I need to be there. And as a pastor, I don't want to let nobody down as their pastor. But if your pastor, through some reason, lets you down, you can still go to Jesus. We're not Catholics here. Nobody has to come to me to get forgiveness. Nobody has to come to me to get approval for anything. I'm a pastor, not a priest. Me and Daniel Ray was out there talking about that this morning. You know, the Catholic believes that you got to either pray to Murray or go into a booth and get forgiveness from a priest for your sins. That ain't Bible. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the only way to God. You know, I may I may have something in my life that I need to talk to somebody about. But I feel like I can go to Daniel or Brother Ray or Brother uh, Phil. If I've got a problem, and they will talk to me and hopefully give me encouragement that I need to hear, but they can't forgive me of, of, of my sins or my shortcomings. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Amen. But if we give God thanksgiving every day, our lives would so be so much simpler. Our lives would be so much more enjoyable. We could have joy in our soul. It's not just when you enter the door of a church house to give thanksgiving. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, 
First thing on your mind should be, thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you, Jesus, I'm still breathing. Thank you, Jesus, and I'm able to get up off this bed and walk and do the living room. But I know what it's like not to be able to do that. For five years, I had to depend on my wife or a medical assistant to get me up out of bed and put me in a wheelchair. But my legs wouldn't move. They wouldn't, they wouldn't hold my body weight up. That's a lot of weight to be holding up. But still, <laughs> we need to be thankful. Not just on Sundays. Not just on Sunday nights. Not just on Wednesday nights. Whenever we have church, we need to be thankful every day. Now, Thanksgiving is a day that Christians, I, I suppose, set aside to be thankful, which is fine and dandy. But if we're a true Christian, we're going to be thankful every day for what we have, for what God gives us, for what he's going to give us, for just existing. Because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. So many times I've wondered. I, I've heard a song Many years ago, it says, I wonder if God cries when we do things we do. Think about that. We as Christians, do we just think of God when we come to church? Or do we have God on our mind 24-7? We need to have God on our mind 24-7. Now I'm talking to myself. Because there's times that God don't enter my mind. And I want to get to the point to where he is on my mind all the time. I'm thankful to God for what he's done to me, done for me, done to me, whatever. But he has blessed me so much. And I can stand here and say I'm thankful for it. But when we say we're thankful, are we really, really mean? You know, it's one, one thing to say I'm thankful, but it's another thing to show God that we're thankful. By thinking of it every minute, every day. Well, you can't do that. Why not? <laughs> If your heart where it needs to be, it should be easy to think of God every minute of every day. And Thanksgiving is that special time that we get together as friends and family and we give thanks. But don't make it just a yearly thing. We need to be in touch with God. And by in touch, I mean we need to be thanking Him all the time for everything that He does for us. Things that we take for granted. I'm able to walk. 
Thank you, Lord. I'm able to breathe. I'm able to stand here and let God use me to say, sir, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my family. You know, families, in this day and age, it seems like they just grow further, further, Further apart. There's only one answer to that. Families grow further and further and further apart because they're not where they need to be with Jesus Christ. Family's got a sister she wants to speak to her. She wants to speak to her daddy. She goes to church every Sunday. Claims to be a Christian. But how can a Christian go through life not speaking to her own kin? Not speaking to her own dad? The one that raised her? How can a person do that? If she's a Christian, she would have love in her heart. That lady has so much hatred in her heart. She can't speak a whole sentence without taking God's name in vain. But yet she goes to church every Sunday. I'd hate to know if I was in that shape. I'm not judging her. Who knows? I'm not judging her. But I know myself. If I was in the shape she's in, when I died, I'd be splitting the hell wide open. I can say that about her. I'll get to be judging her. But I know if, if I live the life she's living, talking the way she's talking, not even speaking to her own blood relatives. If I was to do that, I would split hair wide open. There's not a day it goes by I don't pray for her. Because I know That she's not right with God. If she was, she wouldn't be that way. You know, they say you can judge the fruit of a tree. And I hope that's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to judge her as a person. But a person that talks and carries on and treats her family that way. I don't believe for a minute they can enter heaven. This is a sad time when families can't get together for Thanksgiving. When everything else in their life is more important than their own family. It's a sad situation. And it breaks Tammy's heart. She'll see uh, things that she's put on Facebook telling other people how much she loves them. But she won't even tell her own sister or her own dad. She loves them. Satan is... Satan's working overtime because he knows his days are numbered. You know, I've heard all my life that Jesus is coming soon. I found another one of them uh, concrete crosses this week. It's down on the old 64. Going from Murphy to Pete's Church. 
it's still there. I mean, it's all crumbling, but it, it's still standing. I mean, you can you can tell what it used to say. Jesus is coming soon. Heard it all my life. But friends, we don't have long at all. Jesus Jesus is coming. It may be right after that new president takes over. I don't know. Jesus is coming. <laughs> and Christianity is under attack. Stronger than it's ever been. I mean, you've got people that want to, well, they've already legalized abortion, but they're wanting to make it more, they don't even have to have a, 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 a parental, uh, what do you call that, Henry? Parental permission. Parental uh, permission. They can just walk right in and kill that baby. Walk right back up. They're trying to do away with the churches. They're trying their best. I don't think it's going to be very long before we walk up here and come into church. There's going to be a great big old padlock on that door. That bolt cutters and nothing's going to break. You know, you can go down to the dollar store and buy a padlock and take a, a set of bolt cutters and you can break it pretty easy. But I think when the time comes that all this happens, they're going to have locks that Cutting torch wouldn't even touch. Times are getting bad. And seems like Tammy read the verse this morning, and maybe it's last night, about where when we see that the time is near. Need to be getting serious. And you remember that verse? Did you save it or anything? Hebrews ten twenty five, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Uh, that is a warning. We see how bad things are. We need to be serious. We need to come together and encourage each other and pray for each other. Lord, keep us from home. You know, ISIS I reckon it's still overseas, as far as I know. But you know, it wouldn't take much for it to be over here. Walking into churches, shooting everybody down, or taking a machete and cutting their head off. I mean, that's cruel. That's life. That's life nowadays. I mean, <laughs> It wouldn't surprise me a bit if they was in America within the next couple of months. Because that seems to be what the whole world is trying to attack is America. They're trying to bring America down. Now, it could be that God's trying to bring America down to get it on its knees. That's possible. 
we we pray. We get serious when something happens. I remember when 911 happened. Just about every church was full for a couple of weeks. And then it went back to what it used to be. And worse. If you've got six or seven people in the church now, you're doing good. What is this world going to happen? What is it going to take for this world to see that time is drawing near? What is it going to take? I mean, a child can tell that things are fixing to happen. But yet, adults just going about their lives Never think about God. You know, that's what's wrong with the youth in this world today. It's the parents have quit being parents. They've quit teaching their children about God. They've quit taking their children to church. I wish I had the answer. I really do. I wish I had an answer. But all I know to do is just pray. Pray for this wicked world. Pray for our nation's leaders. I know that if a man gets into politics, and he's an honest man when he goes in, Nine times out of ten, he's going to be correct when he comes out. Because politics ain't nothing what it should be. I don't even like politics. I don't, I don't like to talk about politics. Sometimes I do, but when I do, I usually say too much. So I try to avoid the subject of politics as much as I can. Because I don't want to offend nobody. And I really think a church ain't a place to discuss politics. And it ain't. But sometimes God lays something on your heart and I know from experience when God lays something on your heart and you don't say it, He's going to whoop you. And I don't like whooping from God. Because He knows exactly where to get you at when He whoops you. But Lord help me that I never say anything that shouldn't be said. In church, one night I believe I did. I was talking, and I believe I said a little bit too much. But America needs to come back to God. And I've always said, no bet, no day is better than today. This could be your last chance to come to God. I believe everybody that's in this church is saved. I don't know that for certain because nobody knows your soul but you and God. But I believe everybody in this church is saved. And I'm thankful for that. And I want to speak to the ones that's watching on Facebook. Time is very short. And very soon, we're going to be called away. Some call it rapture. Some call it other thing. But Jesus is coming back for his children. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are left will be called up. 
And I believe that could happen at any hour, at any day. It's my prayer that if you're listening this morning and you don't know God as your personal Savior, that this would be the hour that you would get down on your knees and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. But I believe that you died for my sins. Please forgive me. Lord, come into my life. Come into my heart. And make me whole. That's all it takes. It's a simple prayer. And that's the message. It's short. Again, of course, we started a little bit early today, but that's okay, too. But has anybody got any comments or Suggestions or anything to say, testimony.